Yo, what is up, guys? It's Masso2020, and today we have Ghost Rider vs. Lobo, Marvel vs. DC Death Battle. Now, we've actually had quite a good string of death battles recently, with the last one being Avatar vs. I don't know, that weird anime one. Actually, I think they're both anime, I don't, I don't know, I don't care. But anyway, I'm looking forward to this, and, and I, mean, I know both these characters, and I'm going to go Ghost Rider. First and foremost, I've got to go Ghost Rider. So, you ready? Let's do this. Whether it be justice, vengeance, or the thrill of the kill, bounty hunting isn't for the faint of heart. Especially when your usual targets are superheroes. Yeah. The Ghost Rider, Marvel's relentless spirit of vengeance. And Lobo, the space hog and main man of DC Comics. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, the second and skills movie to find out who would win a death battle. Even at a young age, Johnny Blaze lived life on the edge. Son to the accomplished cyclist Barton Blaze, he was sadly witness to his father's death in a stunt gone wrong. But he got adopted by another stuntman, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, sorry, I mean Crash Simpson. It's no surprise huh. that Johnny became a stunt performer himself until Crash's wife died in a stunt gone wrong. Only now apparently aware that motorcycles can be dangerous, Johnny swore to never perform again. And then Crash got cancer. Damn, even I don't have parent issues this bad. Completely devastated, Johnny refused to let Crash die. Willing to risk it all, he turned to the one person who could fix everything. Everyone's favorite problem solver, Satan. Hail Satan. <laughs> this was Mephistopheles, one of the many lords of hell who happened to have a special interest in Johnny's family line. To save Crash's life, he cut a deal with the devil, curing the cancer at the cost of selling his soul. The deal succeeded, and Crash was healed, but then he died in, well, a stunt gone wrong. I mean, he's a stuntman whose name is Crash. Should have seen it. Yeah, that's true. And after all that, Johnny got stuck with being Mephisto's bitch for eternity. Mephisto even sandwiched him together with a demonic spirit of vengeance named Zarathos. Ooh. Zarathos. Ask your doctor if it's right for you, or your exorcist. Long ago, Zarathos was a powerful demon who threatened Mephisto's realm. Eventually, Mephisto defeated him, forcing him into eternal servitude. And with their power combined, yeah. Johnny and Zarathos roamed the world, punishing the wicked as the embodiment of a death metal album cover, The Ghost Rider. <laughs> ah! Oh god, that's terrifying! Well, sure, his visage instills fear onto many. What? No, Ghost Rider looks awesome! I'm talking about Nick Cage. Agreed. Anyway, as the Ghost Rider, he became one of the universe's greatest threats. He has superhuman strength and speed, and his skeletal body can regenerate from practically any amount of damage. And if Blaze's last name wasn't obvious enough, he can shoot fire! Oh, but not just any fire, Hellfire! The best kind of fire. The kind that's infused with magic that burns not just your flesh, but bypasses conventional defenses to attack your very soul. He can throw fireballs, raise walls of flame, rain fire from the sky, and even conjure weapons and objects out of thin oh, air, cool, didn't know such that. as a demonic shotgun and an infinite stream of chains. And his badass ride, the Hell Cycle. This baby can look however Johnny wants, but he usually summons it as a panhead chopper. It can respond to Johnny's thoughts, scale walls, and even outrace Thor's hammer Mjolnir. Whoa. The same hammer that crossed a galaxy and back in a single minute. You know, I lit my chopper on fire once. I didn't know you had a motorcycle. Well, well yeah, up in, until the fire. Uh-oh. Rest in peace, Roadhog. At least you went out in a blaze of glory, like Bon Jovi said. But while his hellfire and chains are vicious weapons in their own right, they're often used to ensnare the Ghost Rider's yep. victims as he goes in for a truly diabolical kill. Or should I say, a penance. The penance stare is basically hell's timeout corner of pain. Ghost Rider isn't angry, he's just disappointed. And he wow. wants you to think about what you've done, and it to hurt. A lot. Under the penance stare, the Ghost Rider forces you to relive all the pain and misery you've inflicted on others throughout this. your entire life. No indiscretion, no matter how minor, is safe from the Ghost Rider's gaze. So that time I put ground laxatives in my fourth grade math teacher's coffee and gave her the shits. 
Does that mean the stare would give my soul the shits too? Not literally, but you would experience the anger, humiliation, and the butt cramps. So, basically eternal damnation, got it. But should your sins be so numerous and terrible, the penance stare could even obliterate your soul, leaving you an empty husk. The stare wow. doesn't work on everybody, though. You might survive if you're blind, don't have a soul, drop power from pain, or if you're a weirdo like Thanos who gets off on that shit. <laughs> Still, Ghost Raiders grab bag of hell powers, let him tear up some of the biggest assholes in the world, and even some of the good guys like Hulk, Thor, and Doctor Strange. He's quick enough to dodge bullets wow. or even outright catch them in his teeth. He's powerful enough to create massive eruptions, blow up mountains, and even tear down a skyscraper. The average skyscraper weighs over 200,000 tons. That's the same weight as 1,100 blue whales. Or one ex-wife. <laughs> I'm gonna rate that on her next alimony check. And given his hellish heritage, he's rather difficult to kill. Bullets, poison, fire, he survived that was all. funny. Even a beatdown from World War Hulk just got him even more pissed and extra flamey. Not just that. Remember Zarathos? Johnny Blaze isn't simply a host for the demon, but a limiter for his full power. Throughout his life as the writer, Johnny has constantly battled Zarathos in the mind, barely holding on to some semblance of sanity. Should his will to resist the demon falter, Zarathos can take full control, and all hell breaks loose. Not literally, but pretty close. Oh, and plot twist, Zarathos was never actually a demon at all, but an angel of justice. Fire skull head and everything. When he's unleashed, he becomes so powerful, even Doctor Strange wets his robes. Mm -hmm. and this is the guy who pops supernovas like Pez. While Zarathos was bonded wow. to another host, they even managed to defeat Mephisto in his own realm. For reference, Mephisto once battled Galactus, devourer of worlds. Stars detonated, galaxies trembled, and the entire universe was at risk Holy shit. simply as a byproduct of their battle. And if Zarathos wasn't terrifying enough, he likes to eat souls. Of course, the Ghost Rider isn't invincible. Johnny is technically vulnerable as an ordinary human being. Even while transformed, the Rider can be killed via holy weaponry. But Johnny's doing all right, sitting pretty on Mephisto's throne. I guess things worked out okay for him, even if he's not too keen on being the devil's bounty hunter. So let this be a warning. Should you ever hear the rumble of a motorcycle in the distance and the glow of an ethereal flame on the cool. horizon, count your sins, because the Ghost Rider is coming. And may God have mercy be on your soul. So yeah, the Ghost Rider is okay. Out of mercy. Let's turn the clocks back to a distant era of sin and debauchery. The 1990s. No! Inspired by the financial success of Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns, comic writers started churning out grim and gritty superheroes by the dozen, like Cable, Azrael, and Overkill. Yeah, they were badass looking at first, but I mean, what's even happening Jesus. here? It got so absurd that someone needed to knock these roided out monstrosities down a peg. The world needed a hero. No, a parody. Enter the planet Zarnia, once the brightest beacon of peace and happiness in the universe, until its inhabitants were annihilated by a biological catastrophe, leaving only one survivor. The last son of Zarnia, Lobo. The one that killed all the rest of them. A guy whose name literally translates in Zarnian to he who devours your entrails and thoroughly enjoys it. Wow. What? Awesome. Why wasn't I named that? Lobo <laughs> is so unimaginably evil that his birth caused the midwife who delivered him to go insane. The first Zarnian to do so in 10,000 years. Some even think that Zarnia was so perfect and good, the universe made Lobo to balance things out. Wow. Hey, didn't you say the same thing about me when we first met, Liz? That I did. Simply put, Lobo was unique and desired to be even more so. Thus, he ensured he was the only Zarnian alive in the universe. I fragged the rest of the planet for my high school science project. Gave myself an A. Yeah, he's definitely insane. He's he awesome! Lobo left the desecrated corpse of his former home to become a bounty hunter. Probably because it's the only profession that legally allows him to murder. Uh, don't worry, he'll murder you illegally too. Lobo doesn't discriminate. He even has a special gender-neutral insult in the name of my next motorcycle, Bastich. My bastard <laughs> dragon, Bastich. 
Anyway, Lobo's bagged some pretty crazy bounties across the universe, including Santa Claus, two near omnipotent dwarf gods, and even things that don't exist, apparently. Wait, what? And Lobo's Zarnian physiology is just as absurd to match. He possesses godlike strength, speed, and invulnerability, so much so that he can tear through hordes of superheroes like nothing. Should he somehow suffer damage, he also has an impressive healing factor. He's like if Superman and Deadpool had a baby, which is a lot more terrifying when I say it out loud. Did somebody say Deadpool? Ah. No, go away! Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah. There. He's gone. Ah, that's great. Wow. I didn't think you had it in you. Oh, honey, that's not true. Haven't you heard? No one's ever really gone. See you later. Ah, that's I funny. swear to God, I'll kill him someday. <laughs> So, uh, you had the replacement plan on that TV, right? <laughs> um, back on topic, Lobo can regenerate from a single drop of blood, and each one he sheds will actually grow into a completely new oh, Lobo. Oh, God. No, I'm not making that up. No wonder there wasn't any war on Zarnia. Nobody can kill these friggin' bestitches. <laughs> it helps that he's also a super genius who knows well over 17,000 languages. He can perform complex physics equations in his head quickly enough to catch the flash, and can build planet-destroying weaponry out of garbage. His brain is no joke. What? He can resist mind control because he's too ornery, and he's got so much willpower he can literally walk through Green Lantern constructs. You know, those things powered by willpower? And befitting his occupation, Lobo is a master sharpshooter, tracker, and can, by his own admission, deduce the weak point in any opponent. Uh, like how my shotgun leg jams if booze gets in it. I would have gone with your crippling alcoholism, but sure, that too. Lobo may be a powerhouse on his own, but he also comes equipped with guns, knives, swords, grenades, and a bomb that he sent back in time which accidentally killed the dinosaurs. Whoops. His Wait, I thought so not. Yeah, it's mine. Jane. But when his job takes him across the universe, he hops on his Space Hog, a customized Spaz Frag 666, which has automatic machine guns, responds to his whistle, can fly fast enough to escape black holes, and blast Born to be Wild! Wait, wait, wait. How can he sing in the vacuum of space? Oh, that's where you're drawing the line? Not the time he say, hold the alien entity Solaris out of the sky, which is as heavy as a star, despite lacking leverage? I like how he even admits that didn't make any sense. Using a small to medium-sized star like our own sun as a reference, Solaris should weigh nearly two octillion tons, over 300,000 times heavier than Earth. So, pretty tough to bench press. But how about the time he was fighting some rabbits and then he got so face-meltingly angry that he just straight up ate a city all at once? Disclaimer, don't eat away your feelings. It's not healthy. Drink them away instead. Don't do that. But that is trillions of tons of steel and rubble condensed into a sphere smaller than the palm of his hand. By my calculations, that compressed ball should be over 20 times denser than a neutron star. Oh god, imagine that coming out! This unimaginable strength lets him brawl with the likes of Superman. But that's barely scratching the surface. Name anybody in DC Comics and it's likely Lobo's kick their ass. He can even punch ghosts! Sounds like the only thing that can kill this guy is an act of God. Not even that. After rampaging through heaven and hell, tearing through armies of angels, demons, and what have you, Lobo's bloodlust on a literally biblical scale got him banned from the afterlife. As in, death was told that Lobo's soul was not to be collected. So he just can't die now? Not in the traditional sense. He's had his head disintegrated, been reduced to a skeleton, even been turned into a spirit that just kept on fighting until he got his body back. <laughs> the only thing that has ever really held the big lug back is his weirdly consistent integrity. Namely, he'll always keep his word no matter what. Seems pretty weird for a cosmic madman, but he also loves dolphins and will literally go to hell and back to protect them, so... Who even knows anymore? He's not without his failures, though. His greatest of which was perhaps something entirely out of his control. His reboot. What the hell is that scrawny emo Edward Cullen ass looking dork? That's New 52 Lobo. Oh god. A serious, tortured, modern interpretation. Everything that Lobo was meant to be a parody of. Thankfully, someone at DC developed a sense of irony and literally shelved this loser. Nice. The real Lobo returned better than ever and got back to doing what he does best. Kicking ass across the universe! He's not just some stupid alien villain, he's the main man, and the whole universe knows it.
See, someone's paid me a heap of cash for your carcass, and the main man always delivers. Um, I don't know. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, rev up your engines. Um, oh, I don't know. They're both a lot more OP than I thought they were. By now, you've probably heard of Blue Ape, uh, the leading meal kit delivery service in Death Battle. Oh! Nah, I'm, I'm sticking with Ghost Rider. What the frag? Lobo of Zarnia. Your sins are innumerable. I am here to <laughs> Okay, that was funny. Yeah, he wouldn't care about that, would he? I mean, DC are like usually a lot more OP than Marvel, but I I don't know. I was like, oh, there's loads of them there. Oh? Oh? So absurdly powerful, Lobo definitely held a massive physical advantage against the Ghost Rider. Yeah, yeah, that was obvious. Skullhead took down a skyscraper while Lobo dragged around a freaking sun. But Ghost Rider survived some pretty incredible things. Almost as incredible as these new shirts from store.roosterteeth.com. Ah! Time and place, Boomstick. Ah, come on, we gotta eat. Even World War Hulk couldn't finish him off. And Lobo didn't typically carry any holy weapons, which meant he really did not have a good way of killing the Ghost Rider. Yeah, but who needs holy weapons when you're strong enough to crush a whole city? Couldn't he just overpower Johnny? A good question. However, do you recall how powerful Zarathos was? Zarathos was an equal threat to Mephisto, whose battles tore apart the universe. Once the Ghost Rider released his true power, Lobo's physical advantages hardly mattered anymore. But hey, the main man was super smart true. and probably could have figured out Johnny's weaknesses. But how is he gonna escape to find a holy weapon somewhere when the Hell Cycle outraced Mjolnir? Which once crossed the Milky Way and back in under a minute, a feat more than 100 billion times faster than light. More than capable of keeping up with the Space Hog. They were both ah, as unkillable cool. as you can get, but since Lobo was banned from the afterlife, how could he ever lose? This is where the fine print matters. Death was banned from reaping Lobo's soul, but that doesn't mean the soul itself could not be destroyed. 
this is where our research surprised us the most. It turns out the Ghost Rider had three different methods of specifically targeting Lobo's soul. His Hellfire could hurt the soul directly, and since it ignores normal defenses, Lobo couldn't really stop it. With trillions of murders on Lobo's hands, the Penance Stare could wield extraordinary power against him. And while Lobo had a high pain tolerance, he did not enjoy fatalistic agony and unending torture so much that he'd survive all of that at once. Even if he did, Zarathos could just gobble up his soul for a quick snack. The end. Easy as that. Lobo was undeniably a difficult opponent to take on, but the Ghost Rider's cosmic might, unholy invulnerability, and soul-rending powers gave him the perfect tools to take out All the right. man. That poor bastard didn't stand a ghost of a chance. <laughs> Sorry, I knew that was bastard. a Lobo. That's funny. The winner is Ghost Rider. Yeah, Rider. called it. All right, let's see who's next. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want the battle music for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link down below. Also, if you like animated content, check out the new Rooster Teeth animation channel. Just click that box right over there. That's some great stuff. Okay, who's next? Oh, fuck. Mecha Godzilla all the time. Mecha Godzilla. I'm calling it right now. I don't give a shit. I'm calling it now. It's Mecha Godzilla. Alright, so in March 2010, if you guys want to be playing anything else, or react to anything else, especially now because all the CW shows are over and they're starting up again soon, give me something to do. Please like, subscribe, and see ya!